Welcome friends. Today we are going to solve the problem based on uniformly varying load. So we have a beam. So beam has a span length of 8 meters. So overall span length of beam is 8 meters. Beam is simply supported. So it has point support at point A and point B. And uh, it carries it carries uniformly varying load of 10 kN per meter. Something like this. So now, so if you, this is 2 meters. And this is 6 meter. So, uniformly varying load is acting over the length of 6 meters. This is point A, the end points are A and B. So, the reaction it is going to get at point A is RA, support reaction, and here support reaction is RP. Now, to find out support reaction for this particular beam, we first need to convert this uniformly varying load into an imaginary point load. So, how to convert that imaginary point load? That is very important. So, let me just explain you how to convert a uniformly varying load into imaginary point load. So, if you assume this is kind of variation we have for example and let us say that the maximum this is the this indicates the the height of this triangle it is also called as triangular loading this is the height of triangle and this is the length on which load is acting. We can, so, if we say the height of loading that is maximum intensity is maximum intensity is W and the length on which it is acting is L. So, the imaginary point load is given by this area of triangle basically. So, this area of triangle is nothing but if you look at this it is half into intensity into length. So, this particular area gives you the value of point load, imaginary point load. So, the imaginary point load, so the imaginary point load will be given as half the load maximum load intensity times length on which uniformly value load is acting. And its distance from maximum load intensity is this distance which is given as L by 3. So, from this end it is L by 3 and if you want to find out from other end, so it is from this end it is going to be 2 L by 3. Okay? So, like this we can find out uh, the location of the imaginary point load as well as its value. So, now if I want to solve this problem, first find out the imaginary point load. So, the imaginary point load is, is nothing but half into maximum load intensity. So, the maximum load intensity is 10 km per meter. So, it is 10 times the length on which it is acting. So, it is 6 meters. So, you will get the value as 30 kN. So, the imaginary point load is 30 kN and that is going to act at distance L by 3 that is 2 meters from the point B. So, we can show it in the figure itself. So, this is the imaginary point load. So, I am showing it over here. This is the imaginary point load and the value of imaginary point load is nothing but 30 kN. And its distance from the point B is, that is this distance is 2 meters. Okay? So, now, now we shall not consider uniformly varying load, rather we will consider a simply point load acting at distance 2 meters from point B. And by considering that only, we will find out the support reaction. So, to find support reaction, we will be using the condition of equilibrium. So, by using condition of equilibrium of beam. So, by condition of equilibrium. So, in the condition of equilibrium, we have basically all forces are balanced. Since we beam AB is in equilibrium, all forces are balanced in the vertical direction as well as horizontal direction. And moment about all the points are balanced. So, we can say I will use first condition that is algebraic sum of all the forces in vertical directions are balanced that has to be 0. So, what are the forces in vertical direction? So, upward force I am considering positive, positive RA. I am considering po upward positive, downward 13 kN that is minus and again RB upward plus equal to 0. If I simplify this equation, I shall get Ra 
प्लस आर बी इक्वल टू थर्टी किलोमीटर सो दिस इज माई इक्वेशन नंबर वन आई मे यूज इट लेटर ऑन सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी यूज द फोर्सेज इन द वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन देर आर नो फोर्सेज इन द हॉजन टू डायरेक्शन ओके सो आई कैन नॉट यूज द कंडीशन ऑफ इक्लोग्रम इन द हॉजन टू डायरेक्शन सो वन ऑफ द कंडीशन इज अल्जेबाइक सम ऑफ ऑल मोमेंट्स नाउ आई कैन टेक मोमेंट अबाउट पॉइंट ए I can take moment about point A or point B or any point I can take. Okay, but generally we should take a point at which unknown is acting, unknown force is acting. So in that case, that particular force get cancelled out because its moment will be zero. So I can better is that you take moment at point A or point B. So I am considering moment at point A. This so algebraic sum of moment of force, moment of forces. I am taking point A as zero. You can even take point B also, or you can take any point. Like you can take this middle point somewhere. Let me call C also. Doesn't matter. Okay, you will end up getting same result. But for simplicity, we should take the points at which unknown forces are acting. So when I take moment about point A, so beam, uh, we we can say that point A is hinged now. So if you apply a reaction. B, your beam is going to rotate at anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so the moment of forces about point A would be because beam AB is going to rotate in the anti-clockwise direction due to RB. Since point A we have taken as uh, hinge point, so this anti-clockwise rotation is taken as negative moment. Similarly, when 30 kN will act downward direction about point A, beam AB will rotate in clockwise direction. So that is taken as positive. So clockwise is positive and anti-clockwise is negative, as far as uh, our sign convention is concerned. You can take vice versa also. So let me first take moment of uh, force R B about point A. So it is R B times distance of point of application from point A is this whole A B length and A B is eight meters. Okay, and since it is counterclockwise sense, it is going to rotate. Like this, so I am going to call it as negative. This is going to be negative. Okay. Now, what about moment due to 30 kN? It is going to be positive because beam is going to rotate in clockwise. Since it is 30 into point A to this particular point, which is 2 meters from here, so it is 2 uh, overall is 8 minus 2 will be 6. So it is 30 into 6. Since it is rotating in the clockwise sense, I have written this positive. Any other moment? No, there is no other moment we have because we have only a moment due to R A will be zero because R is acting at the same point. So if you simplify that, you get eight R B one eight zero eight R B equals a six into thirty that is one uh, eight zero. So if you further simplify this, you'll get R B equal to twenty two point five kilonewton. Okay. If you substitute the value of R B in equation one, so you can find out the value of R A. R A. R A equal to so R B is twenty two point five. So R A will be thirty minus twenty two point five. That is seven point five kilonewton. So if you look at here, we have found the value of R A and R B. 